Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. We're going to talk about divine mercy, but I'm going to come at you a little bit. I'm going to come at you a little bit, so be ready. We just celebrated divine mercy in the church, right? The first Sunday after Easter, the eighth day of the Easter octave, and people love <laughs> divine mercy Sunday. We had a little event in the Bronx, and it like, it filled up. Normally, the church fills up like it does on Divine Mercy Sunday on a day where you're going to get something, right? Like Ash Wednesday, you get ashes. Palm Sunday, you get the palm. The Easter Vigil, they give you a little candle to carry. And and if you're on social media, like Divine Mercy is everywhere. It's like, yeah, Divine Mercy. All right. We love, we love, we love, we love Divine Mercy Sunday. And I get it. And I get it because it's beautiful. And we look at the story, right, of the prodigal son returning to his father's house and the father running out and embracing him and throwing a party and it's beautiful. Or we look at Peter who denies the Lord and then the Lord right, has this beautiful uh, intimate breakfast with him where his three denials can be righted by his three affirmations of his love of Jesus, right? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, and I get it and I get it and I get it. But... Here's where I'm going to come at you. I don't know if there's a feast in the church which has a greater call to action, which carries with it a greater weight or responsibility than Divine Mercy Sunday. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive as you have been forgiven. Or the gospel that is used on Divine Mercy Sunday, Jesus says these words, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. In this instance, he gives the apostles the ministry of forgiving sins. He breathes on them the Holy Spirit and gives them the power to forgive sins. And 100%, there is a unique way in which the binding and loosing of sins is given to the apostles and the bishops and the presbyters ordained by them through the centuries that is given to them in a unique, particular way, manifested with the binding and loosing, um, most notably in the sacraments of confession. But my brothers and sisters, I'm convinced of this too. I'm convinced that in a real, unique, particular way, different than the way it's given to the apostles or to Peter or to priest, that all of the baptized are given the ministry and the mission of forgiving of sins. And in a certain sense, we're all given keys to God's mercy. And if we keep it locked, it stays locked. But if we open it up, God's mercy flows into particular unique situations in our own lives and in the world. My brothers and sisters, the, the feast of divine mercy, it makes all of us, it makes all of us missionaries of mercy. And if you look at, if you look at the story of the prodigal son, right? The prodigal son, he returns to his father's house and he's reconciled. He's reconciled with his father. But the other son, the other son stays away from the house. He stays away from his father's house because of unforgiveness. And so the father goes out a second time to the unforgiving son to bring him back home as well. And the obstacle to his coming home is unforgiveness. And if you look at this, right, like, okay, the prodigal son, the prodigal son is restored to his father's house, and that's beautiful. But as long as there is unforgiveness in the other son's heart, the father's house, the father's family remains fractured. The body remains broken, and the kingdom of God remains in need of repair. The work of the Father is not done. Because remember, like our relationship, it's a communal relationship. It's a body relationship. It's a familial relationship. It's not just about me being reconciled to God. It's not just about me being forgiven and bathed in the waters of divine mercy. That's 100% part of the story, but that's not the entire story. I have received forgiveness. Now I must be willing to forgive. And, and I sort of imagine like when I receive the forgiveness of God, like you know that divine mercy image, right? Where, where the blood and water are flowing from the heart of God. Like, that my own heart, when I receive God's mercy, His forgiveness is filled up 
with his cleansing waters and his saving and forgiving blood. In a certain sense, right? And now it's up to me to forgive those persons in my life who need forgiveness from me. And because in a real way, right, particular way, there are sins, there are wounds in the body of Christ which will remain unless you bring in the saving, cleansing, healing waters of God's mercy. Like, if you have been hurt by your brother, he might be reconciled to all his other family members, but until you forgive him as well, there's a fracture in the, in the family and there's a brokenness in the body. And that can go into a wide variety of relationships. And my brothers and sisters, the, the power, the strength to forgive It comes from God. As with the apostles, they need the Holy Spirit to forgive sins. Again, we're talking about forgiving sins in a different way, just to make that distinction. But in a real way, you and I also, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to forgive those who have sinned against us. But we have the Holy Spirit. And because of Him, we have the strength to love beyond our strength. So let's get practical. How do we really live this? How do we really start our journey of forgiveness? Number one, oh God, come to my assistance. Oh Lord, make haste to help me. Come Holy Spirit, Lord God, help me. We just cry out, we cry out for help. Number two, we bring in Our Lady. Because if if we look, right, at Mary, how much she had to forgive those who betrayed, who ran away from, who abandoned her son uh, when he needed them most. So Mary is a great model of mercy and forgiveness. So we beg her prayers. We beg her prayers. And number three, with the Divine Mercy Chaplet. We pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And there's a part, right, the prayer, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us, and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And what I invite you to do is, where we say for the whole world, is a great first step. It's hard, it's hard, but again, with God's grace, you're capable of hard things, um, to insert a name, or a person, or a group who has hurt you. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on my brother. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on my dad. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on my employer. And that's a great start. Pray into it. Bring God's mercy into that situation. I think that's, I think that's a great start. It's a great way to call upon the Lord and to begin bringing our hearts along on this journey, this mission of forgiveness. My brothers and sisters, we are given the grace to forgive others because... We have been forgiven so much. Let us call upon God and His divine mercy to give us the strength to be missionaries of mercy in the world, in our lives, in our communities, in our families. We thank you so much for watching. Remember, somos peregrinos poco a poco. Vamos a llegar. We're going to make it. God bless y'all.